in the previous 15 episodes, you start questioning that, oh, I must have been wrong. Well, no, with that... And then you kind of trying to figure it out and it just it just won't come because there's always an answer. It's that graveyard scene, isn't it? Yeah, that graveyard scene just drives you mad. The, the crime story itself actually came about at the last minute, um, as they often do, actually. You, you sort of... Um, you, you, you ponder the kind of the, if you like, the metaphysical bit of life on Mars and what you want to get out of it. Do you want this to be the episode where Gene worries that Sam's gone mad? Do you want this to be the episode where Sam realises he's in love with Annie? You start asking yourself those questions first about an episode and then you try and work out a story, a crime story, that gives you a good vehicle yeah. to explore those emotions. It's too late, it's over. You failed. This man came to you for help. And also, we wanted men in balaclavas, didn't we? You really wanted men we in balaclavas with sawn-offs, yeah. Yeah, because we, yeah, didn't, we made a huge deal. mistake in Series 1. There wasn't a single man in a balaclava or with a stocking on his head. No. So we wanted no. to readdress that. Yeah. Oh, oh, there are three of them! Shooters! They have stockings over their heads! Bloody perverts! The editorial team have obviously always had a, a, a knowledge that Sam is in a coma, but I think the real challenge for us was to ensure that 73, at times during the show, during the series, became a reality. And I think the episode eight story, where Sam is confronted with evidence that shows that 73 is his reality, um, was always something that we wanted to achieve, and that was something that we built up through the series. We knew kind of, you know, as with series one, we knew there was a kind of a strand that would run through series two, which was Frank Morgan and the, the idea of Hyde phoning Sam and recall, recalling him. Um, but to be honest with you, episode eight really came about, in the writing, it really came about right at the end. I think what we reveal um, in episode eight, when it's ultimately the kind of downfall of Gene that brings about Sam's return to 2007, is the fact that Gene is an element of Sam and um, has always been an element of his mind. And indeed, we talk about a malignant tumour in, in Sam's brain. And I think the question for the audience is, is perhaps that kind of malignant tumour part of Sam's brain actually a representation of Gene? There's a tumour in the temporal of Sam's brain. They thought it was a clot, but how's about that? A clot it is not. Wow! I, I created the idea of the tumour in Sam's head because I wanted there to be something physical that we could imagine had started to exist in Sam's, in Sam's body. There was some physical manifestation of his commitment to 73. Sounds a strange thing to say, but it, I think also it was, a good, um, it was a good driving factor through episode eight, the idea of cutting out the tumour. There was this surgeon in 2008 saying, or 2006 saying, I'm going to cut the tumour out. And in 73, Sam was going to betray Gene, excise the tumour mm. that was existing in the police force of corrupt or sort of lazy, whatever you want to call it, um, old-fashioned policing. So it was a good way of running those sort of parallel, those metaphors. I, you know, I just went with the flow, really. You know, I just kept playing the character. <clears throat> and then it was like, oh, you're the cancer of it. And you go, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, am I? I thought that was Morgan. Or, you know. Yeah, dis destroy Gene Hunt. He's out of control, Sam. Like a cancer. The sooner we cut him out, the sooner I can leave. I always sort of looked at it as if, as well, from sort of Sam's mind point of view. Um, so everything's starting to change in episode eight so even the characters that he thought were really solid like chris with him can maybe show a different side and and you know in in my head i was thinking how i can how that can be part of his mind a bit like when we had the doctor's voices in uh, series one it, it suddenly puts a funny slant on it then that, that oh perhaps this is all in his mind and just as soon as he tells annie that he's working for morgan our characters all start changing and things start to, you know... Well, we just found out, to... hadn't we, in that, that particular moment just before we stormed out that that he'd been spying on us and he'd gone behind our backs and he was really 
Yeah. He was really there to, to, to create our downfall. Yeah. So we were obviously not going to be okay with him. And no. it was ni it's probably nicer to see Chris kind of throw throw a tantrum, if you like, because he never did with Sam. I, I was always, Ray was always giving it loads, but uh, to see a different side of Chris there, that was more uh, more of a poignant moment, I think. Mm. It was it was weird doing the last two because to put Sam up against him was kind of I don't know it was, it was difficult to do because I think we've we've spent two series uh, developing this brilliant cop partnership me and him and uh, it's a great partnership and I think you know they've learned and and they learn from each other and you know they 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 take from each other and. And they become friends, you know, and they trust each other. I mean, I think at the end of episode two, um, I watched the rough cut of that with Phil, and uh, we had a lump in our throat at the end, you know, give each other a big hug at the end. It was really sweet. Do you want my appraisal of you? No. It's your round, then. The only way we could get, we would believe or even like Sam enough to betray Gene mm. was if he thought that Gene was um, literally, literally a cancer, a cancer yeah. in his brain that had to be cut out. Otherwise, he would never do it. And throughout episode eight, there's, because he's such a brilliant actor, you see that tension mm. behind his eyes that, you know, although I'm doing the right thing, I'm betraying the mm. people that I've lived with mm. in 1973. Mm. And that gives that last episode its um, energy, I think, mm. and its conflict. Mm. Expose that fetid man as the criminally negligent copper he so obviously is. Is that clear enough? We always